If you've been interested in skincare and have been watching YouTube for any length of time, I am sure you've heard of The Ordinary Products. Loved by both dermatologists and consumers alike, they have been a super high quality, affordable brand. But why doesn't everybody use them? If they're so popular and so great and so inexpensive, why use anything else? Well, there is a learning curve and there are some downsides. So if you want to hear about some great anti-aging products to try and what not to do, then just keep watching. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my channel, Lisa Mini Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. I would love if you would consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell. Actually, if you've been here before and you're still not subscribed, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lisa Monique Beauty. If you want to get a more personal connection, uh, go ahead and check out my channel there. Not a channel, what is it? Check out my account. Can't think of the word. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the five ordinary products that I picked up for anti-aging. And then I think I will tell you what I did wrong, products that I should have purchased instead, and just kind of an overview of my ordinary journey. Okay, so when you first go to the ordinary website, it's really confusing. It's very clinical. They have long descriptions on a lot of their products. They have warnings, don't use it with this, don't use it with that. They have like eight vitamin C's and they have this chart. Oh, this one's high potency, low irritating, high irritating. I don't know. It's, it's scary and overwhelming. So sometimes you just think, I don't want to have to deal with all this. Just tell me what to buy and I'll buy it. I kind of had that philosophy, the stronger, the better. Get the most bang for your buck and if you need to dilute it, then you can do that. Not saying that's the right philosophy, but that was my philosophy. So the five products that I purchased are The Ordinaries uh, AHA 30% and BHA 2%. It's a peeling solution. It is a chemical exfoliant to be used once or twice a week and it is considered very strong and irritating and they recommend that you build up to it. Prior to this, I was using the Drunk Elephant AHA, BHA, and it's a 25%, not 30%. I've used it with no issues, so I thought the transition would be really fast for me. I just didn't like the red. I mean, I'm gonna pay 10 times as much because I don't like the red, hmm, maybe. But uh, it's this thick red serum put it all over your face and leave it on for 10 minutes and then rinse it off and it is clarifies, lifts off the dead skin cells. It also penetrates uh, deeper and has some skin rejuvenating properties. They also mix it with vitamin B5 and black carrot as an antioxidant. Okay, the next product I bought was the Ordinary's Vitamin C Suspension 23% in hyaluronic spheres of 2%. So this is L-ascorbic acid. There are many forms of vitamin C. They have many forms and many derivatives on their website. This, according to the website, is high potency, high irritation. It is not mixed in water, which is supposed to help keep it stable. And that was the one thing that I worried about. If I don't use it a lot, I didn't want it to go bad before I could finish it. So this suspension is a like I said, a more stable suspension. This is very inexpensive when you go work your way up to some of the derivatives, which are gentler on the skin, the price does go up. Why would you use vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid? It has skin brightening, a hyperpigmentation lightening properties, and it's also an antioxidant protecting against free radicals. Again, you would use it for acne, hyperpigmentation, overall aging, lines, fine wrinkles, etc. Next, I purchased the Buffet and Copper Peptides. So this is a combination of copper peptides, Metrixol 3000, uh, Metrixol Synth 6 peptides, just a bunch of different peptides as well as the 1% copper. So copper peptides are great for rejuvenating the skin tissue and boosting the production of collagen and elastin. So this one to me was one that I thought is what I want most. I, I really want to be healing from within. However, it does not work well with any other acids. It doesn't work well with tretinoin. It doesn't work out work well with your strong antioxidants. So it's pretty much a use it by itself type 
product. Then I got the niacinamide and I got 10% zinc 1% and niacinamide is great at reducing the appearance of skin blemishes, it kind of clears out your pores, it shrinks your pores, it, it evens the texture. I have used other products with niacinamide. I really do love it. I've also, after I purchased the 10%, saw a lot of videos on YouTube about people that had bad reactions to the 10%. So, oh, you know, stronger is not always better. There's back and forth on whether or not you can use niacinamides with your vitamin C. It used to be you cannot, but now they're saying maybe you can. That's just something I think you might need to experiment a little bit with, uh, but it does work well with tretinoin. So it does work well with my Retin-A. In case you didn't know, tretinoin is the generic name for the brand Retin-A. So it's kind of my holy grail. So I did get that niacinamide. And then lastly, I got a lactic acid, 10% uh, plus hyaluronic acid. So this is also an exfoliant, a chemical exfoliant. You should not be using it same time with any of your other exfoliants. Uh, you're not supposed to use it with any other acids. You're not supposed to be using it with your tretinoin. I picked the lactic acid over the glycolic acid because it is gentler. Okay, so those are the five products that I purchased. I purchased all of these for well under $100. So those are the products that I purchased. Now let's hear about what I did. I have been watching YouTube videos I have heard, you know, all the warnings about what to use, when to use, but, you know, it kind of just goes out the window when you just have a bunch of new products sitting on your counter. And I was like, oh, do I really want to go look everything up? I think I spent 45 minutes on the website trying to decide what products to buy when I initially was purchasing a couple of them. So I decided I was just going to use them all at once. Yeah, so you know how that turned out. Okay, let me just give you a little backstory though. My skin, a month ago, I had an allergic reaction to a bronzer. I, I put it on my hand, or on my forearm to swatch it, and I put it on my cheeks, and then by the end of the day, my forearm was getting hives, then it, my face was all messed up. It took over two weeks, or about two weeks, for my skin to calm down for the, to clear up and for it to start getting smooth again. So I decided that I needed to do a little chemical exfoliant to kind of help slough off this dead skin that had been left from the hives. So I tried the Ordinary 30% AHA and I put it on really thin. I didn't drip it on my face like you see everybody doing. Just put some on my hand, rubbed it on my face and set a timer for 10 minutes. Well, after about four minutes, I'm like watching the timer, trying to <laughs> say, when can I rinse this off? Because it is tingling, but almost to the burning point. So not in a good way. Again, I've used the Drunk Elephant for six months. Can leave that off 20 minutes. Never had a reaction to it. Just slight tingling. I knew what that felt like, what a good tingle felt like. And I was like, eh, this doesn't feel like a good tingle. So at the six minute point, I just ended up washing it all off and my skin wasn't red or anything like that. I just put on uh, my lotion and went to bed. That's all I did. So the next day was the day that I just decided, screw everything I've ever heard about mixing products. I'm gonna mix all the products. So I started with the vitamin C, I put it on. It actually stung a little bit, just alone. And then I threw on everything else on top of it. I just kind of made a little pool in my hand, mix them all together, put it on top. <sighs> what was I expecting to happen? After five minutes, I literally ran to the sink using water, drenching my face, trying to get off these products because it was burning. It, it really was burning, not the good burning, the burning where you know that you're damaging your skin. Fortunately, I don't know, they must all be fairly water soluble because after rinsing it all off, the burning stopped. So I did feel good after I rinsed everything off and then I patted everything dry. And then being the idiot that I am, I mean, really, you would think I knew nothing about skincare. I was thinking, well, since I've washed all of these actives off, I think I'll use my tretinoin because I haven't used it in over three weeks because of my skin irritation. So I then put tretinoin on top of my skin and it didn't really burn, it tingled a little bit. But around here, like I kind of put it 
like up here around here and then I don't know it, it just felt not good <laughs> around my eyes and yeah I totally burned my skin it wasn't the hives there were scabs per se. It was just really dead, burned, dried skin. I could just feel it was just super uber dry, like a layer of dryness. I am not going to put on anything except for moisturizer on my face until it clears up. So it was another week before my skin cleared up. And during that week, I did all my research again and wrote notes down and everything like that. Because the problem was, is that you hear about all this stuff and then you forget. And when it comes time to using it, I don't know, you just want to use it. I've really only been using these products for a week because I had three weeks of damaged skin. Last night, I did use the alpha hydroxy or the AHA, BHA chemical exfoliant and had no issues, could leave it on for 10 minutes. I did not put it on thick enough, I don't believe. Um, I'll show a picture. I, again, put it on my fingers and put it on and then put it a little bit heavier right on my cheeks but I forgot my nose. I didn't go heavy enough on my nose. Like after normal chemical exfoliant, I normally feel like everything is really smooth and cleaned out. I do like the product though, and am definitely going to keep using it. I'm just gonna mix it up with my Drunk Elephant because I have them both. And between the two of them, I think it'll probably last me a year. I mean, you do not use a lot of either product when you're doing your chemical exfoliant, and I only like to do the chemical exfoliant once a week. Let's move on to the vitamin C. 23%, 23% high irritation, high potency. What was I thinking? I have somewhat sensitive skin. They, I think, might have a 12%. I mean, really, you do not want to start with the strongest formulation, especially if you have sensitive skin. And I was watching a video from one of my favorites, Penn Smith Skincare YouTube channel, and she just recently did one on how to choose what vitamin C to use and why L-ascorbic acid might not be the best vitamin C for you. So after watching her video, doing a little research, The Ordinary also has a option called magnesium ascorbyl phosphate in 10%. It is a derivative, it is a higher pH, less irritating on the skin. It works well with other products and ingredients. I can use it with my retinol and my retinoids and it is really one of the best for hyperpigmentation. That is a product I probably should have bought. Instead, that is going to be the one that I'm going to try and work into my routine. I am currently using another vitamin C with the ferulic acid and the vitamin E mixed in together by Dermatology. When they're mixed together, it is less irritating on the skin. I've been using vitamin Cs off and on for pretty much last summer. I haven't really noticed an overall brightening effect. Some people swear by vitamin C's. I think this one is too strong for me. I did put a little bit in my face moisturizer this morning and put it on and it tingled for about 20 seconds, maybe less, maybe 10 seconds when I put it on uh, and then it dissipated. Maybe that's how I will use this, I'm not sure. Okay, lactic acid. When would you use the lactic acid? I mean, it is a alpha hydroxy to exfoliate the skin. I use my tretinoin to exfoliate my skin daily and I use the uh, BHA, AHA, BHA to exfoliate once a week. I don't think this product was necessary. I don't think I needed another acid. I think it's overkill for my sensitive skin. You can't really use it with anything else so I would rather experiment I think with the vitamin C to see if I have the brightening effect over another peeling. My skin is so smooth. So I, I just feel like this might have been a mistake to purchase. I mean, you gotta kind of think, what products do you need currently in your skincare routine? I don't want to alternate this one day, tretinoin one day, some of these other products one day and have a different product or for the next four days. So I did start putting this on my decolletage just to see if I notice any difference because I don't put any any other products there? I don't know. This one I probably could have skipped the lactic acid. Niacinamide, 10%. After I bought this, I saw a lot of videos that uh, the 10% was too strong for people and they did have a 5%. I should have started with the 5% again, having a little more sensitive skin. I just wanted to go in for the strongest because my friend Kimberly said that this is her 
fave or one of her favorite products. Oh, actually, a couple months ago, she said this was her favorite product. I think she kind of did some other ordinary videos since then, and she has some retinol type products that she loves, which I don't use because I use Tretin-A or Tretin-A, Tretinoin. And so I did purchase the niacinamide because it's supposed to be the best for improving the texture of the skin. And that's what I needed. I'm not really using this a lot because I have another serum, kind of a mixture serum, one and done type serum that has niacinamides and copper peptides actually uh, mixed together, which typically you look at them and they say don't mix them together, but I think they're fine to use together. Dr. Dre did a review on the, it's the Needless Serum by Dermatology. She did a review. She didn't say, oh, it's bad because it has niacinamides and copper peptides. So I do feel, Penn Smith has reviewed the Needless too. So I do feel that it is uh, safe to use. I might, I don't know, I might just add an extra drop of this into the Needless Serum, see if I get that extra niacinamide boost, but my skin, my pores, if you've watched any of my videos, I do this whole close-up thing. Um, I think my pores have shrunk in the last year and actually are really good. I mean, I feel like I have to keep using it because I don't want it to go back. But my issue is when I get out into the sun at all, you know, my hyperpigmentation spots come back. I am going to keep this. I am going to try and figure out how to work this into what I'm already using, maybe just put a drop in my moisturizer. Again, it does work well with Retin-A or your Tretinoin, so I think this will be something I can definitely use up. And then lastly, the Buffet Plus Copper Peptides. I just am not sure how I'm going to work this in. So Penn Smith Skincare did a couple videos on the benefits of copper peptides, and I love the fact that they're working from within, right? That, that they're the collagen and elastin boosting. I feel like I really need that but you can't use it with anything else. You can't use it with your tretinoin. You can't use it with your acids. You can't use it with your vitamin C. So I would just have to use it alone. And I've used it on occasion. I mean, like I'm, I'm down to here. I've used it on occasion alone, like maybe once a week, once every two weeks. I mean, not really frequently. And I didn't notice anything. So if I have to use it more often, then I have to stop using my tretinoin, which is really such a great exfoliant and it also works collagen boosting and everything like that. So I, do I need this instead of that? I'm still trying to figure out how to work them together. And again, that Dermatology Needless Serum also has copper peptides in it. So this is the, these two products, the lactic acid and the copper peptides are two that I'm not sure I needed with what I already have in my skincare routine. Not sure how I'm going to work them in. Hopefully they have a longer sh uh, shelf life. I do keep them in a skincare fridge. We will, we will see if I change things up in the next couple of months, uh, if I figure out a way to make them work, just so I'm not wasting the product. Though I have thrown away a lot of products that were a lot more expensive than these. I'm gonna have a playlist at the end of my video where you can see a lot of these dermatologist videos and other YouTubers who have used the ordinary products that I've kind of used as a basis when choosing what products I wanted to use on my skin. Definitely do your own research. They're great products. Great, inexpensive products, but they're strong. And you can have a lot of skin irritation if you use them incorrectly. So just go slow and be careful. Let me know below what your favorite ordinary products and how you work them into your skincare routine or if you actually had a bad reaction to any of the products and think that you need to kind of warn other people who have sensitive skin uh, that this one you have to use very cautiously. And that's it. We will see you next time.